Marriage and family has always been the base foundational relationship of any society. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for being here. And as each society flourished and as families were uh, encouraged and promoted, society grew and flourished. Because from those family units, it would move out into different levels of society all the way up into government. But sadly, we see many of those values and traditions being not only discouraged, but being challenged legally. You know, we've seen time and time again, society after society, the Romans, the Greek, the Syrophoenicians, have all fallen away and, and are now just an ancient history. You know, those societies are crumbling and they're crumbling fast. Hey everyone, I'm in Altai, a region of Russian Siberia that is also known as Russia's Switzerland. I'm with a special group of people, a family that moved to Russia all the way from Australia and actually lives here despite sanctions, war in Ukraine and everything that comes along with it. And you may know them from their YouTube channel, but trust me, the things you're about to see in this video, well, let's just put it this way. Get ready for some exclusive content. It's great, it's energizing. <laughs> we made it. I think that's a success. <laughs> yeah, now we need to get Josh down. Yeah, I'll chop <laughs> the bottom down. <laughs> <laughs> hey, John. Welcome to sunny Siberia. Yeah, good to see <laughs> you. You too. That I believe in, in Josh's lifetime, um, this will be completely changed. Going to be uh, a, a Russian Switzerland or a Russian Austria where you've got these amazing, you know, chalets and hotel complexes. You can already see the money coming in, the big developments that are coming, and they're building, you know, big places. The first time we came, you know, there was cows walking all over the road. Even in the last few years, we've been driving around this area, and just the amount of roadworks and upgrades that they're doing is just phenomenal. At the same time, currently Russia is the most sanctioned country in the world, and while this might not have significantly impacted daily life here, do you, do you really believe that Russia has a promising future, say in the next 10, 20 years? Oh, absolutely. We know it's the most sanctioned country in history of any country ever to exist. Dozens of nations have used financial punishments to try to get Moscow to stop its military action in Ukraine. If we just take the last five years, the economic growth that Russia has not only been able to maintain, but increase compared to what we see happening in, say, Europe right now. You know, those countries are, are moving into recession at a, at a fast rate with, with not a lot of opportunity to get out of it because their their industries are being decimated. Хороший покупатель. Мои покупатели все хорошие. Я имею в виду, знаете, вот после санкций, после вот там вот этих событий, как-то тут меняется жизнь. Цены подросли, жизнь это усложнилась, так по-другому никак. Цены подросли, да? Да. Ну конечно, все цены на зарплаты не растут. Да. Ну все как обычно, как у всех, в принципе, я так думаю. И что делать? Вот цены выросли, зарплаты не растут. Что делать? Вот поднимать. Цены опускать, и вообще идеально будет все. People 
ask this question, you know, oh, have prices gone up in Russia? But, you know, when I talk to friends and relatives back in Australia and I see how much prices have gone up in Australia, it, you know, Russia's way, way better. Record high gas prices. Inflation in the U.S. peaked. Really feeling the price pinch. And we are still stuck with very high prices. Everyone's talking about inflation is just crushing them uh, in the Western countries. But I haven't felt it anywhere in here as much. I think my, my purchasing power is stronger in Russia than it would be in Australia. Let me argue with you here. Yes, Russia may have overcome these sanctions or, or adapted to them, just like Cuba and North Korea, because the country hasn't ceased to exist. But do you think Russia will thrive? I do. Because that, that's the point. Because you moved here with your family. There is a lot on the line. All things considered, do you still believe this country can thrive and be a good place for your children, say, 20, 30 years from now? I do agree. I do. I do definitely believe that. If I had to characterize Russia and its culture and its people, it would be, I would pick the word resilience. Russia has been through so many different circumstances that would just cripple. It has bounced back and, and moved on. Yes, it's hard now, but life will get better. We will work hard to make it get better. have dinner like this together you know you, you can't build relationships if you don't spend time together you know it, that's just the reality of it what we're we drinking no, 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 no. Mm. Yeah. you mentioned this yeah by the way is is um, uh, alcohol frowned upon here we, we don't drink a lot of it sometime if I'm cooking outside and you know doing barbecuing stuff we'll have a beer but we also, we, we do it very much in moderation and we're also very conscious of who's around us when we do it. We, we generally don't do it with the grandchildren around uh, and things like that. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for being with us. Father, thank you for, Lord, your love and protection throughout the day, watching over us, keeping us safe as we travelled. So when I say that, you know, we're a conservative-based family, it's really putting forward that uh, we believe in God. We we uh, try and live a life that uh, is meet you know, biblical values, and we structure our life around that. We build and base our life upon, you know, the instructions that God gives us upon our life. It gives us a, a, a very strong foundation to handle all the different situations that we come across. Because no matter what happens, whether you build it upon the rock or whether you build it upon the sand, it's the same circumstance. The storm's gonna come, the wind's gonna pound. It's the fact that you've built it upon the rock, as in, the teachings of God that will give you the strength and the ability to be able to handle those storms. I've noticed that Evelyn and Sabrina typically wear dresses and skirts in your videos, avoiding pants and jeans. Da -da -da! But not sure that's that. Was this a deliberate decision? Yes, it was a deliberate decision. We live in a world that is um, very anti-women being women and um, we want to be women and we want to be feminine and we want to be, we want to feel uh, and remind ourselves that we're women but we want also to be seen as women. Is makeup frowned upon in your family? Well you may not tell it but I'm wearing it now. Personally, I see makeup not as something to change the way you look, but to enhance the way you look. Personally, I don't really prefer layers and layers of makeup. It's not something I like. So um, I just prefer the more sort of natural look. There are things that men do better and there are things that women do better. 
Now I can promise you that I could never, ever, ever be a, a good mother to my children as my wife is. I have been asked so many times, wouldn't it be much better if your wife went and worked and brought in income uh, to the family? It would be, and I go, there is not a job on earth that could pay enough to replace what my wife does in our family. No one is going to love my children more than my wife does. What do you think, Evelyn? Have you ever thought about getting a nine to five job? That would be a nightmare. <laughs> that would be a nightmare because, um, I mean, obviously before we were married, I had a nine mm. to five job. Mm. It was awful. There's not a better job in the whole world uh, for any woman. And I personally think it's um, the, the highest calling for a woman if you have the opportunity to be a mother. So she's saying it's important to look after your teeth. Every day we sit down and we have a, an official lesson time, not to be skipped for anything. We go through uh, cartoons, actually. Just people saying, you know, daily, everyday dialogues. One thing that's really amazing with watching something is that even if you don't understand what they're saying, you understand what they're doing. What does albejal mean? Run around. Albejal. Mm. Yeah. Oh, to, to like, to... To uh, like or to specifically to adore. Yeah, to adore. Mm. So he doesn't need to go to work anymore and he has lots of friends. Oh, no, they don't need to go to work anymore yeah. and they can be with each other more. Oh, each other. Drug, drug, yeah, yeah, drug, drug, yeah, yeah. Yeah. While Sabrina and her family are busy with their Russian lessons, let me share something with you real quick. If you're watching this video, it means you're looking for a way to get acquainted with real Russia. It's beautiful warming traditions, outstanding culture, and truly nice people. And of course, you might have thought already of learning some Russian, haven't you? It's true that even learning Russian itself is the shortest and most sure way to get to know Russia face to face. Therefore, I'd like to recommend you Smart Russian Language School, where you and your family can acquire Russian from professional and highly experienced native teachers. Smart Russian offers you a wide range of learning options, from classical individual tutoring to speaking clubs and family programs for newcomers to Russia. Click on the link, fill out the form, and the founder of the school, Tatiana Semke, who is originally from this place, will help you start your beautiful Russian journey. Use my promo code REAL7 to get 7% discount on any program you choose. I wish I could hear you in a while. Speak Russian. Our move was prompted more because of where we saw Russia going uh, from a, a political and social standpoint compared to what we saw in Australia. In Australia, it's a little bit frowned upon to have a big family. It's people, it's been promoted to have small families and reduce the number of people. Another big one is the introduction of the LGBT. First institution in the state to introduce gender badges for teenagers. She, her, he, him, they, them. These are the new pronoun badges being rolled out at Redcliffe State High School. Now it's being promoted and almost enforced on people. Teachers can lie to parents when a student asks the school to change their gender. We believe that marriage is only between a man and a woman, and that's the way God defined it. But now we, we see that against that. It's not only not allowed to do that, but you are being encouraged to do the total opposite. Bull told my son he could wear a dress next year if he felt like it. And if you don't, you have a very strong possibility of your children being taken away from you. For not learning the new political agenda? Exactly, yeah. For not teaching, not having this political, liberal, you know, perversion as we like to call it. Spring Street has hosted a drag queen story time session. Alex doesn't feel like just a boy or just a girl. They feel very uncomfortable being called he or she. For many years now, even in primary school, students are being told that there's no such thing as a male or a female. Well, all right, let me throw it out there. Are you against LGBT people? As far as um, a one-on-one -on -one relationship with people who are in the LGBT, um, we don't hate the people. We're not against the people, but we are going to make choices for our future and uh, our lives. Could I have a conversation with an LGBT person about what they believe and why they believe it and what I believe? Definitely. I would be friendly with them. 
but if they try to force me to believe something or to teach my children something, I'm against that. So that is a big reason I want to move in a country where family is promoted and it is safer for my children to grow up. What makes you think that Russia is a different country in that regard? Firstly, Russia, what, within two years ago, three years ago, ratified into law that marriage is only between a man and a woman. Brak это союз мужчины и женщины. Союз мужчины и женщины. Мужчины и женщины. So they 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 put that in law, which I'm, which Australia has actually removed. Then we see uh, many of the laws coming in regarding not being able to uh, promote the, all their LGBT perversion and protecting children, particularly school age children, from that. Пока я президент, у нас не будет родителей, они будут папа и мама. While opponents of these laws, both here in Russia and abroad, say that these laws actually infringe on the rights of minorities and make life harder for these people. So, are they are they persecuted against? Are they fringe? Possibly. But, you know, that's something I'm okay with. See, any government has to has to address the question: What is best for our society? With the laws Russia is introducing being very family focused and family orientated, and the opposite, where Australia pulling away from that, and it was right at that time. I was talking with the family. We we're sitting down together talking, and we said, "Well, we've only ever been to Russia in summer. We need to go in winter to see if we can actually survive." It's great, it's energizing. Definitely have a warm place to get warm afterwards. <laughs> All right, I'm going back in the tent. <laughs> a hardworking, God loving family from Australia that sees Russia as a new frontier for conservatives dissatisfied with the cultural shifts happening in the West. One might think their immigration to Russia was like driving in the fast lane but it turned out to be quite a bumpy ride instead. Even after living in Russia for several years on various visas, they failed to secure a place in the quota that would grant them permanent residency. The immigration department literally said to us, that this doesn't apply to you. You don't have any Russian relatives and you're not from a Soviet, former Soviet Union country. And that led us to, you know, looking for other ways to be able to, to, to find a way to stay here. The family faced a tough choice, either leave Russia or miraculously find a legal way to stay. We, I had a baby YouTube channel at the time. I think I had two videos um, and maybe like 10 subscribers. And then my, my dad is amazing. I said, you know, just film a video in Russian and just film a video to the president. You know, just ask. Уважаемый Владимир Владимирович, прошу вашей помощи. And so I look back, it's the most embarrassing video ever. The background was terrible. I had a smudge on my lens. I looked like I'm in some kind of underground bunker hiding you know, some, some sort of refugee. I don't know if the president ever watched the video, but um, overnight we became famous. We had people wanting to interview us, do television studios wanting to talk to us. So we got a, my, my YouTube channel grew. Joel, Sabrina, come to us. Actually, we had we had people saying, "How can we help?" The long story, to cut it short, we had people talking to the immigration department, just saying, "What are the options?" So, Vonya, Orjin, Orjin, class again. But it was amazing how just how people got behind us. They were just excited about our story. I never thought that four years into being here, I would have citizenship. What else? Everybody here seems to know somebody who wants to move away from Russia. Everybody thinks the grass is greener somewhere else, but they don't see the, the, the pluses that you have a lot of things here that you take for granted. Well, that's interesting. So what things do we take for granted in your opinion?
just for example, if you are somebody here, you're a, you're a lady, you go at work, um, you get married, you have a child, you can have three years maternity leave here. That's unheard of. Um, like if you get it in Australia, mm, like you get six months, I think maybe it's probably could be less now. Also, like like the pension system. If you're in Australia, if you actually save money, um, you have assets, you planned for retirement, if you get to pension age and you still have money, you don't get the pension. You go, well, you're too, too rich, you're not poor enough for it. Whereas here, it's amazing, like you, anybody gets the pension provided, you know, you're a citizen and you're doing all well, like, it's not, you don't get penalized for for actually being responsible and planning ahead. Well, some might argue that in Australia the pensions are bigger, while in Russia they're smaller and could be difficult for some people to get by on. That's true. Um, in Australia you do have larger pensions, but the cost of living is higher. For example, here the cost of rent is a lot lower, um, which is a huge, um, a huge percentage of any income that he's paying for, for accommodation. I'm not saying move to Russia and your life will be a bed of roses. Maybe you're not going to be the richest person in the world if you go and be a, work at a cash register in the local store. But if you are willing to do something that's a bit out of the box, maybe start a small business or something like that, Russia is full of opportunity, um, more so than I would say Australia is. How do you support yourself in Russia? <laughs> How do we support ourselves in Russia? Um, that's a great question. My youngest daughter here, she, she teaches English as a, uh, as a, as a uh, business. She has online students, so that's you know, some of the ways she supports ourselves. Uh, we, have, we run uh, a YouTube channel, uh, which we do, and I wouldn't say that really supports us because you make very little money out of YouTube here in Russia. Uh, we do it more for um, trying to, you know, to show people that you can live a great life here in Russia, that it's not this big scary place that, that everyone makes it out to be. It's actually a, a really great place. So one of the main reasons we love the Altai region is the nature. I mean, check it out. Can you imagine Josh getting a Russian citizenship and, say, serving in the Russian army? Yes, I can. We could, hey, see, oh look, you know, Russia's involved in a conflict, maybe we should be moving to another country, or, you know, that's, that's obviously an option that we have. Uh, we're not stuck here, we don't have to stay here. We choose to stay here. We, we want to be Russian because we believe in what Russia is doing, and um, and it's not because it's because of the values that we believe Russia has, um, and we understand that there are consequences of that. And if that involves, you know, obviously if if Joash uh, becomes a Russian citizen, and then he he has to do national service, well, I make this decision, and this is a possible consequence, and we're willing to accept that. A son's prayer. Dear God, make me the kind of man my daddy is. And the father's prayer is, a father's prayer. Dear God, make me the kind of man my son thinks I am. Long before moving to Russia, Evelyn wrote a children's book about a little girl named Emily moving to a new home with her parents. The family in the book was heading to the Australian outback, not Siberia. 
but for some reason everything else sounds very familiar. Emily's family is driving to their new home in the desert. They are driving on dusty, bumpy roads. It will take two days to get there. In the car is Daddy and Mummy, biggest sister Mary, big sister Jane, big brother Josh and little Emily. This new place is very different from her old house. It is such a long way from any towns. There are no neighbours, they are all alone. At the end of the week at their new home, Emily's family is sitting around a small campfire in their backyard. It has been a wonderful week and she is very happy. There are so many new things that we can do here that we couldn't do at our old house, says Emily. It's been a big change, but I love our new home. It's the best place in the whole world. For me, home is where my family is.